Last week, I had the pleasure of shadowing Meet Kevin, Kevin Prathrath, over in California. I went over, I stayed in Oxnard, right on the beach. I take the family everywhere, of course, so I had the wife and daughter with me. We always make a little mini vacation out of everywhere we go. We stayed right on the beach, which is incredible. We've never stayed on the beach anywhere in California, so to see the differences in that beach versus our beach was really cool. It was a little cold, um, but we really enjoyed it. But um, as far as meet Kevin, this was a really incredible experience. Let me just go ahead and say that right off the top. This was over the top. So what it is, is he's basically um, charging for the opportunity to go out and fly on his jet with him. He just bought a jet to fly around the, you know, the West Coast uh, looking at properties. And so what he did is he has a real estate startup company called House Hack. Uh, and he's raised a good $22 million, I believe, um, from accredited investors so far to go out and invest in single-family homes. Um, so, But he's not buying right this second. What he's done is he's put the $22 million into treasuries. He's got a six-month, a, a three-month, a six-month, and a one-year, I believe, treasuries that he said, treasury bonds um, that will mature and make the company a lot of money. Um. But what he's doing is, is he's traveling around the country looking at different areas. And it was so interesting going to these, these areas uh, with him and learning exactly how he evaluates different areas um, and what his strategy is. Because I wanted to know the insights of HouseHack because I want to be an investor of HouseHack. I could go on HouseHack.com right now and invest in the company. But I didn't want to pull the trigger until I could actually sit down with Kev and um, and really pick his brain and really understand the company from the inside out and kind of what's happening behind the scenes. So that's one reason why I did the trip. Another reason is, is because we started YouTube at the same exact time. He has 2 million subscribers and I have nearly 100,000. So I wanted to get his take on my channel, which he gladly looked at. But this guy is, if you know Kevin, he's exactly the same on YouTube as he is in person. Exactly the same person. There's no different Kevin. There's not a... There's not a YouTube Kevin and an in-person Kevin. There's Kevin. And um, very intelligent, super sharp, quick on his feet, um, and has a wealth of knowledge of so many different things. So it was incredible to spend some time uh, with Kevin. We actually, so I got to the airport at 8 o'clock. Was it 8 o'clock? No, about 7.30 actually. I got to the airport at 7.30. Um, whenever I... Uh, whenever I got there, um, I met, he had an intern there. So he has a team. So what, one thing I thought was cool was he has a team and he has two guys that are working for him that literally research for him. Um, and I asked him how long he's had that because I know on his channel, he talks about all kinds of stuff. So I was thinking, okay, he's had this team for a while doing all this research, helping him come up with all these ideas for his YouTube videos. But he said he literally just hired them in the past 30 days. So it hasn't been long at all. Um, but he had two guys that literally research for him all day and report back to him with research items. I thought that was really interesting. He has a, um, personal assistant, um, that was there. Um, incredible guy, McKay. He was actually, I was actually on his podcast this morning. We recorded an episode, so I'll, I'll post that on my YouTube here whenever I get that. Um, in incredible guy, young guy. <laughs> we were talking about, 2010 when the BP oil spill happened, he's like, I was like, you remember that? He's like, no, dude, I was 10, 10 years old. But um, then he had a video guy and another guy that was kind of like another personal assistant. But it was really, his team was really incredible. There were two other people shadowing with me. Okay, so when he does this, there's three people total that are shadowing him together. The other, another guy was a mortgage broker that um, I connected with. Um, the other guy had a tech company. Uh, that basically, I believe what it was is teaching people to 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 uh, to work code, to build, to write code. But listen, so I get there at seven thirty. Um, you know, hang out, meet all those guys before Kevin gets there. We go ahead and get on the plane. Uh, the plane is incredible, by the way. If you get a chance to do this, go do it. Like it's it's really uh, it is really fun. It's really uh, educational. But being around someone with that high energy. I needed that. I wanted that, right? You got to be around people that are doing bigger things, honestly. And he's doing big things. So the house hack was interesting. I had to understand that company from the inside out, what they're doing. Um, I don't want to elaborate too much because he hasn't really released everything. So I don't want to miss misspeak on exactly what he's doing with the company. I know he's going to release things, you know, as he goes. But 
uh, outside of learning about that, he also started an ETF. He started an ETF and he went and rang the closing belt at the New York Stock Exchange, um, which was really interesting. So I watched that happen, but I wanted to know why he did the ETF. So what was cool there, what I learned was that if you uh, if you're the owner of the ETF, if you started the ETF, right? If, if you if you're just a reg if you're just a regular person like myself that owns stocks and you own a portfolio of stocks that you picked, you own a bunch of different single stocks. One stock goes way up, and you want to and you want to take money out of that stock and balance your portfolio out by putting that money in a different stock. You have to pay taxes on those gains when you sell that stock and buy another stock, but not if it's in an ETF that you own. And so it's basically the 1031 of stocks. And this is why he did it. And that was very interesting. I don't want to go out and get my financial advisor license. I don't want to start an ETF, but just knowing why he did it and what, what it does um, was very uh, educational. So we go to Redding, California, and we look at eight houses with two agents. Hearing everything he was asking those eight, those agents and also me asking questions and him telling me, you know, things that he's looking for in different areas gave me incredible insight on, you know, how to better evaluate uh, towns and cities and areas that I might want to invest in myself because I'm buying multifamily. So it gave me better insight on how to evaluate, you know, multifamily deals in Florida and different weird cities that I never heard of, how to go there and understand what we're really looking for in terms of job growth, why people live there, things of that nature, what rents go for, so on and so forth. Um, so we went to Reading. We did that. Um, his wife actually made uh, uh, lunches for us. He had a box with a bunch of brown paper sacks with like sandwiches and stuff and an apple and some chocolates and string cheese and stuff that his wife, Lauren, actually made for everybody. And it, it, it's like we can stay on the road. We can stay on the road. We can keep moving, keep looking at properties. And, uh, you know, we don't have to lose that time. So we went to Reading and then we, which was, it was an hour flight. It would have taken us 12 hours to drive there. And then we fly to Santa Monica. Okay. We flew to Santa Monica because he interviewed Brett. Let's see. His name is Brett Winton. And he is the chief futurist is his title at ARC Invest which is Kathy Wood's investment, you know, group, ARK Invest. Um, and so I was in the room when Kevin, you guys can see the the interview on Kevin's channel. I was in the room when, I'll actually put the interview in the link below. I was in the room when he interviewed Brett about, uh, about AI, um, um, about all kinds of different companies, about um, EV, you know, electric vehicles, um, all kinds of stuff. It was crazy to actually be there and listen to all that stuff firsthand. Anyway, when we went to the airport to come to Santa Monica, it took 30 minutes to drive from the airport to where we were going to interview um, Brett. When we went back, now it was going to be an hour because of traffic. Like it went from 30 minutes to an hour. <laughs> so we had a car and get this, Kevin was driving and we had one of the other shadow guys in the front seat. I was in the back seat. And we're basically racing down through the city. We end up hitting Crenshaw Boulevard and like just booking it straight down to the uh, to the airport. And just hung out for a while. So anyway, had a great experience. A lot of fun. I learned so much. Dude's really who he says he is. And, um, you know, we're friends now. And that that's a cool thing, too. We're connected for life. I'm going to bring him on a Zoom call for you guys. And. Um, you know, interview him for you guys live, you know, coming up in the next month or two. So that'll be a lot of fun. But yeah, um, had a lot of fun. I highly suggest you guys going and doing that. And uh, anyway, click this video to watch another one of my videos. And we'll see you guys on the next video, which again is right here. I 35 with the top down, quit to tell a hater they should get like me. Seem like